Hello everybody, welcome to PCR TV, Euro PCR 2018. My name is Farrell Hillig, I'm from Johannesburg, South Africa and the University of Cape Town. With me I have the pleasure of talking to Francesco Bedoni from San Donato Hospital in Milan, Italy. Welcome. Welcome. Today we're talking about left atrial appendage occlusion and we want to talk about the clinical and anatomical considerations for optimal patient selection. So perhaps I can ask you a few questions and uh, we can explore the subject. The first question I'd like to ask you is why do we need to close the left atrial appendage when we've had the traditional therapy of, of anticoagulation available to us? Yes, anticoagulation is the main therapy for uh, non valvular atrial fibrillation, but there is a lot of patients that uh, couldn't take uh, anticoagulants for contraindication, for high risk of bleeding. The bleeding risk may be very high, especially in elder patients. And so uh, there is uh, some situation, some indication where the LLA occlusion is uh, absolutely mandatory in this, in this patient, and the result shows that uh, it is effective in this kind of patients. Okay, so perhaps you could be a bit more specific about which patients we should be choosing. So, in the real world registries uh, and in uh, European survey, we can sh see that there is a, 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 a the, the, the patient that are treated by LA occlusion and patient with contraindication to anticoagulants and uh, with the high risk uh, or with uh, a recurrent stroke uh, w despite the use of anticoagulants. And this is the, the, the general patient. Then there are some special patients that may be treated, they have the, a, 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 a special interest to be treated with uh, LAA occlusion, like patients that had uh, already had the intracranial hemorrhage, uh, patients with the end stage renal failure, and patients with uh, gastrointestinal bleeding, for example. Okay, so if we've decided that this is an appropriate patient that requires left atrial appendage occlusion, how do we assess that patient and the patient's anatomy in order to determine if it's a suitable case? Well, there is different. Uh, atrial appendage are very different uh, anatomy for sometimes uh, chicken wings, very simple, sometimes uh, cauliflower, so complicated. And probably this uh, uh, different anatomy has an impact uh, in, uh, in the rate of uh, LA thrombosis and uh, consequent stroke. So it's a very important to have a, a, a good definition of the anatomy of the LEA before to treat the patient. And also the um, anatomy helps one plan the procedure, which device to use and the sizing and other f uh, factors. So there's different approach to define the anatomy. There is a, a complex evaluation with the CT scan uh, before the procedure, transesophageal echo before the procedure, and the angiography during the procedure, uh, and the echo and the echocardiogram monitoring during the procedure. So, uh, I think uh, it's important uh, to to think that, uh, especially especially for uh, non-experienced centers, it's better to to have a multimodality uh, way to uh, try to understand the anatomy of the LAA. So. Uh, probably in very experienced center, uh, centers, uh, LAA, um, LAA anatomy can, can be defined with uh, transesophageal echo and, uh, and um, angiography periprocedural. But in less experienced centers, it's better to have more information that may, may be given by the CT scan. Okay. Now, once we've done the procedure, we have a foreign body in the left atrial appendage with some th risk of thrombus on the device and we have to give procedure, post-procedural medication to these patients who have a high bleeding risk. Now, how do we manage this situation? Yeah, this is a really debated uh, uh, issue because as, uh, 
uh, because the, 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 the goal is to avoid uh, anticoagulants in this kind of patient. So uh, there's no doubt that in patient with the contra complete contraindication of, um, of anticoagulants, uh, we have to start uh, from the beginning with the, with uh, the antiplatelet therapy, uh, single or double antiplatelet therapy. But there are some uh, uh, centers that uh, for one to two months after the implantation, in patients without the contraindication, maintain the anticoagulants for uh, some time and then uh, switch to antiplatelet therapy. So would it be fair to say we need to individualize Yes, the most important thing is, that, uh, as in different situations, is to, to individualize the therapy. Sure, we, it's important to have uh, a good final result because the presence of uh, uh, leak uh, and uh, at, the, um, at the LAA, at the, between the LAA, the LAA and the device, may lead to increased risk of thrombus. So, the most important thing is uh, to achieve. Uh, a good result to avoid uh, long-term anticoagulation. And do we need to follow up this result over a period of time to see if we can stop the, the, the post-procedural medication at some point? Well, sure, uh, the follow-up is very important. Uh, we have no fixed uh, time to follow up, uh, but, but it is very important uh, uh, to achieve the result, a, a complete uh, LA occlusion in, uh, in the first uh, months after the operation to be sure that our, our uh, uh, result was uh, our uh, a well procedure is effective, so it's very important probably to redo a CT scan uh, if it's not uh, in, in case of uh, um, renal impairment or the, uh, an alternative to have a, a, a T uh, to, to, to check the result. So perhaps I can summarize by saying that we need to, uh, there are patients who are suitable for left atrial appendage occlusion, they are normally the patients who have bled or are particularly high risk of bleeding. We have to assess the anatomy to check the suitability and select the device and guide our procedures. And that influences our device selection and our post-procedural therapy needs to be individualized to the specific patient's needs and follow-up is important to determine the uh, results and to decide how to ma manage ongoing post-procedural therapies. Yeah, I completely agree. I, I think that you have to consider the bleeding risk of the patient, uh, the, the, the ev eventually some contraindication to the anticoagulants, and, uh, uh, and evaluate the, the, the uh, risk-benefit ratio in uh, treating with the anticoagulants of the LA uh, occlusion. Obviously, our procedure has to be safe. This is, man this is the most important thing, because with the safe, uh, 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 immediate result, uh, uh, effective immediate result, we can uh, give uh, a, a, a great possibility to some patients that can, that where uh, anticoagulants are, are not the best choice. Thank you very much. That's a pleasure. Thank you.